Utah is a great place to live and work. The communities along the Wasatch Front are known for being clean and safe and for having access to a diverse and scenic natural environment. Utah's mountain valleys provide both drinking water and recreation opportunities, but also play a role in trapping air pollution that impacts people during winter inversions. Inversions are created when warm air, high pressure systems trap cold air in the mountain valleys and act like a lid to keep it there. They can last from a few days to a few weeks and occur several times during the winter air season, which runs from November to March. Emissions from ermit activities build up during inversions through atmospheric chemical reactions. Throughout the majority of the year, Utah has good air quality, but there are times that air pollution levels are among the highest in the nation. During long inversions, air pollution levels are in violation of the standards set by the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, to protect public health. The Federal Clean Air Act and the Utah Air Conservation Act require action by the Utah Air Quality Board to meet the national ambient air quality standards. In 2006, EPA changed the standard for fine particulate matter less than 2.5 microns in diameter, which is also known as PM2.5, from a standard of 65 micrograms per cubic meter of air to a standard of 35 micrograms per cubic meter. As a result, several areas of Utah had PM2.5 levels that exceeded the new standard and were designated as non-attainment. These areas include the Valley portion of Utah County, which is Provo Orem, the Salt Lake Ogden Clearfield non-attainment area, which includes all of Salt Lake and Davis counties, the eastern portion of Tooele County, the western portion of Weber County, and the southeastern portion of Box Elder County, and Cache County. PM2.5 pollution levels impact the health of the people living in those areas. The number of children and adults with asthma, respiratory, and heart disease who require additional medications and hospitalization for these conditions increase. Studies in Utah have documented that the rates of asthma in children and adults and cardiac death in older adults increase during and following high PM2.5 pollution periods. In addition to health, Utah's winter air pollution affects our quality of life and opportunities for economic development. No one likes to look out of the window during winter inversions, much less work, recreate, or exercise outdoors. The number of days with unhealthy air makes it difficult to attract and retain businesses and individual employees looking to relocate to Utah. Of the 32 metropolitan areas and 121 counties nationwide that are designated as non-attainment for PM2.5, Utah contains three. These designations started a three-year clock to prepare a state implementation plan, or SIP, for PM2.5. The Utah Air Quality Board is the responsible party for approving and implementing the SIP plan. The SIP process began with work to understand the complex formation of PM2.5 air pollution. Emissions of air pollutants were studied for the winter days when monitoring showed that the PM2.5 levels exceeded the standard. Detailed air pollution studies were undertaken to identify the individual pollutants, and air sampling filters were analyzed for the chemical constituents that make up PM2.5. Once the formation studies were done, DAQ scientists used the Environmental Protection Agency's air pollution computer models to understand what emissions reductions would be effective. The model worked by looking into the recent past for a day that exceeded the PM2.5 standard. Scientists then programmed into the model the meteorological and temperature data, along with monitored air pollution levels from this day, to replicate the conditions. Once the conditions were replicated and the model was validated, emissions reduction strategies were run through it to test whether they would actually lower PM2.5 levels back to the standard. The SIP includes a combination of control measures that are contained in rules adopted by the Air Quality Board. Once adopted by the board, the rules become enforceable as the mechanism to ensure that emissions reductions are achieved. The public has the opportunity to provide comments on these measures and the rules during the public comment period. A stakeholder process was used to identify the emissions reduction strategies. Six county work groups, one for each county in the three non-attainment areas, were comprised of members of the public, environmental groups, academia, industry, health, transportation, business groups, and elected officials. Emission reduction strategies were selected based on the specific inventory of emissions in each non-attainment area. For each area, the amount of needed reductions to meet the standard in the future was identified. 
strategies were considered reasonable based on the cost per ton of emissions reductions that could be achieved while considering the cost, availability, and effectiveness of the selected controls. The work groups contributed to the SIP development process by providing recommendations for several iterations of reduction strategies. Their recommendations were evaluated with the computer models and helped to refine assumptions about the daily emissions based on their unique expertise. The strategies contained in the plan result in reductions from projected emissions from each of the emission sectors. Although additional work will be needed to reach the emission targets, the reduced emissions will bring immediate improvements to the pollution levels and a corresponding benefit to the health of the residents currently living in the non-attainment areas. Improvements to air quality are up to all of us and will require reductions from each of us. The future will bring better quality of life in keeping with Utah's values.